Hello, adventurer. Do you want to try the best street food in Singapore? Then you're in the right place. Today, I'll take you on a Singapore street food adventure at our top Michelin Hawker Centers. Let's begin. Welcome to Hong Lim Hawker Center. This is the home of six hawkers that made it into the Michelin Beef Gourmet. We're gonna try all six of them. Hawker centers are a big part to our culture in Singapore. This is where a lot of us locals eat at almost every day. I love it so much because not only that I'm spoiled for choice, but a number of shops that I can choose to buy from, I can also easily get a decent meal in under $10. Now, we're gonna start with a very iconic dish in Singapore, the bakute from Hokkien Street. means meat bone tea. Basically, it's referring to this pork bones that's been simmering in the broth with spice and herbs for hours. So, I have a portion of the meat bone tea here. Bone appetite. Wow, it is very herbal. Actually, not my cup of tea. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be showing you the best hawker food in Singapore. But I'm just gonna give you my honest opinions. <laughs> the pork meats on the bones are also edible, but a lot of times it's not as flavorful because all the flavors have been absorbed by the soup. So usually you'll take this mixture of uh, soy sauce with a bit of chili so that you can use it as a dip to give it more flavor. Wow, I was wrong. <laughs> this pork is so nice. <laughs> so the pork is tender. It's actually still sweet. Nothing like what I expect from a pork meat in a bakut thing. The past few makoji that I eat, the pork ribs are just dry because they have been sitting in the soup for hours on end. But man, this one is so tender and flavorful. You can taste all the flavor of the soup infused inside the meat. I don't like the soup, but the pork is amazing. By the way, a bit more about makote. There are two popular types, the herbal, which is this one, and the peppery. Actually, it's a lot easier to find the peppery bakute in Singapore. The most well-known one is Songfa bakute. The herbal version is more on the bitter and the herby flavors, while the peppery version relies more on garlic and pepper to infuse the pork flavors. I think both has its merits. I don't even know if it's fair to say that uh, one is better than the other, because essentially, they are two different dishes. Personally, the best herbal bakute that I've tasted actually is in Malaysia, in this area called Kla. I wish I could go back there and taste another bowl of their herbal bakute. But for now, I'll stick with Hokkien Street. By the way, usually you can order this with a side of rice, but I'm expecting to eat a lot today. If you're into soup and you want to experience the herbal flavors of Asia, then this soup is definitely worth your try. For our next dish, we're gonna find the minced meat noodles. Okay guys, I have a bad news. They are closed today. Uncle, today is closed. Ah? No, no open. Sad. This is one of the most popular minced meat noodle store, also known as Bak Chow Mee. This store dates all the way back to 1939, but today they are closed. A bit sad, but it's okay. Let's go and try other things. Okay, this truck waiter is so popular. You would think, oh, there's four people in a queue. Nope, there's a whole line of people. The people running the store are now second generation hawkers. They are very experienced in what they do. Excuse me, can I ask how long do you guys queue up to this point? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Let's hope it's worth it. <laughs> Otherwise, it would not be a queue Yeah. <laughs> so beware if you're coming, especially during peak hours. I expect the queue about 30 minutes to maybe one hour. So, what keeps you coming back? Like, so long queues still want to come? The taste part. The taste. Alright, that took me about half an hour to queue and get this. By the way, if you can't take spicy too well, you can ask the chili on the side so that you can adjust how much on the food. I wanted to skip it altogether, but I heard that the chili is nice, so I don't want to miss out on the flavors. So, the name Chan Kui Tiao actually just means stir fried rice noodle. This flat noodle is called the Kui Tiao. Let's have a taste. Wow, yeah, the chili. It really makes all the difference. What's so special about a good cha kway teow is the smokiness that comes from cooking in a very hot wok. This is what we call the wok hay. This cha kway teow has quite a bit of it. Together with the sweetness of the sauce, it really brings in very unique taste profile. It's almost like eating sweet roasted meat, but actually all you're eating is rice noodles. 
There are also generous servings of the eggs that coat the noodles that gives it a lot more flavour. And then you add in the cockles to get a touch of seafood. Honestly, it's one of the better chow kway in Singapore. But if you ask me whether I want to queue one hour for it, at most I will queue for this uh, 50 minutes. It's often said to be a very unhealthy dish. But you see, there's a vegetable in it. It's healthy now. If you want to know how a smoky noodle tastes like, then you definitely have to try the chak kway tiao. Now, our next dish, the heaviest noodle in Singapore. The wonton mee from Gigi Noodle House. Alright, that's the wonton soup. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's the chili. See how strong I am lifting one ton with my bare hands. Actually, the one ton is referring to this dumplings. These are called one tons, and the me just means noodle. These are thin yellow noodles. But you can still choose to have the soup inside or separate. Let's have a try. Very good. I like the vinegar kick, the sweet and savouriness of the sauce infused in noodles, and the char siu pork slices. More on the sweet side, but it really complements with the noodles. Don't forget the lard. Amazing crunch. The inside of the wonton, very flavorful. You can also try a bit of the green chilies, give you a bit of sour and a spicy kick. Okay, let's try the chili with a bit of noodles and the chili on top. Wow! This chili is flavor. It looks unassuming, but I think they put some shrimp or prawn paste. Oh, very tasty. The way I like to do it is to have a taste, then take a spoonful of the soup. Mm. This resets your taste buds, so you can taste all the flavors all over again. Amazing. If you're into sweet and savory noodles, you must try one tan mee. I'll finish this and our next dish is curry a la Singapore. You know, I'm actually taking a huge risk in making this video. It's only 11 a.m. and I'm already on my third meal. So please, like this video so that this can reach more people. Thank you very much. Finally, we got our curry chicken. This time, the dish is very straightforward. You have chickens and you have curry. It also comes with noodle, potatoes, tofu puffs, and a fish cake. Now, let's have a taste. Mm, very good. Definitely can taste that coconut milk melting in your mouth. Super savory, super tasty. And you see why it's a genius move to put tofu pops in it. It'll absorb all the curry when you eat it. Boom. The tofu curry explodes in your mouth. Let's try the chicken. Oh. Chicken's very tender. Though, as you can see, they actually added the curry after they chopped the chicken. So it's not really the chicken curry where the chicken absorbs a lot of the flavors. The chicken is more like a topping rather than being part of the soup simmered in it for a long time. I'm actually the most looking forward to the potatoes. This is the potato that's been sitting in the curry for hours on end. Let's try. Oh. The potato is nicer than the chicken in the curry. This chicken curry is actually very different from the typical chicken curry that I know about. Nevertheless, the curry soup is really good. If you like complex flavored broth, then definitely you want to try this curry chicken. I'll finish this up and let's do one more dish at the Hawk Center. Wow, actually, red flag. There wasn't any queue when I wanted to buy this. But let's reserve our judgment until we finish tasting the dish. So, a braised duck dish typically comes with braised rice, but some shops also offer the kuih, which I prefer. Basically, it's another type of noodle, like the kuih tiao, but a lot wider. Let's have a try. This is the duck. Well, well, well. Wasn't I expecting that? 
setup is pretty cool. And it's not because I've been here filming. It really is cold. <laughs> Texture wise, not bad, but it's just not as fantastic as I'm hyped up to be. Well, the quid is nice. <laughs> well, I expected more flavor in the broth. I don't think it's a Michelin guide worthy. In Singapore, we call this standard drop. Cannot make it. Definitely not what I would expect from a Michelin guide. So, one thing that I've learned today is that the Michelin Guide is just a guide. It's a good place to start, but eating from a store in the Michelin Guide does not guarantee that you'll have a good experience. It still boils down to your own personal preferences and how well that the stores maintain their standards. Honestly, the best way to enjoy a hawker center is just to walk inside, take a browse around, whatever you see, you smell, you hear that you want to eat, just go and get it. If you want to truly enjoy Singapore, check out this next video where I rank the top 23 Singapore tourist attractions to know which one to go to. I'll see you there.